Okay, so now we have some basic ideas about linear programming. Now we're going to introduce the method graphical approach that can be used to solve problems with only two decision variables. So certainly that's very restricted, but that's going to help us to get a very important intuition about one property about linear programs. Anyway, let's start. So the example that we're going to use in this video is this one. We want to maximize these two, uh, x2, x1 plus x2, subject to these five constraints. Two of them are sign constraints. So the first step is always to draw the feasible region. All we need to do is to take each constraint one by one, and for each of them, draw that line, and then determine which side is feasible. For example, x1 less than or equal to 10, you first draw this vertical line, and then you see that the left-hand side is feasible. For the second constraint, you know is x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 12. Okay, this line. And then you know, okay, the left-hand side is feasible. Or for the third one, you know the right-hand side is feasible, and so on and so on. Eventually, you get five parts, and you find the intersection of them. That's the feasible region, the shaded area here. And then you want to draw some isoquant lines. Here, quant means quantity, and actually means objective values. So this is a line such that all the points on it give you the same objective value. For example, this line here, all the points there gives you the same objective value, 8. For example, 4, 4, 0 gives you 8, and 0, 8 also gives you 8. This is another isoquant line, and that corresponds to the objective value 4. These isoquant lines are also called isoprofit lines or isocost lines when you are dealing with different applications. For example, if I am maximizing my profit, I may call that isoprofit line, and so on. Okay? Or uh, in economics, typically these are called in different lines or in different curves. Okay. Uh, sorry, I mean in different curve. Okay. Okay, so now we have several isoquant lines and we may proceed to the next step. So now we want to know among these isoquant lines which one is better and that is going to tell us where should we push our isoquant lines. This is a maximization problem. So I certainly prefer this isoquant line because this gives me a larger objective value. Okay? So that means from here to here I get an improvement and that means I should push the isoquant line to the right uh, to the right of myself. Okay? I want to indicate the direction that may decrease or increase the objective value for a minimization or maximization problem. For this maximization problem, I want to increase my objective value. And then I keep pushing, keep pushing, until I get the end of the feasible region, which is this corner, right? I certainly want to stop here because if I go any further, I'm going to make all points on the ISO cost line infeasible. I know along this line, all the plans are equally good. And here, I get only one plan that is feasible, and I can see if I want to do any further improvement, all the points here will be infeasible. That means this particular corner is my optimal solution, mm -hmm. right? I just need to keep pushing the isoquant line to the end of the feasible region, and then I know that end is the optimal solution. And then, Numerically, I want to solve for the co coordinates of this point or this corner. What should I do? I need to identify those binding constraints at the optimal solution. For example, this one and this one. And then, I need to set those binding constraints to be equalities, and then solve the resulting linear system. 
For example, because here I have these two constraints, I have one row, two row, in this uh, actual for, in this matrix form, and then all I need to do is the Gauss Jordan elimination, and then I can get an optimal solution, ten and one, okay, numerically, and then I may plug in these numbers into the objective function to get my objective value, which is twenty one, and that completes my um, analysis to this problem. I know the optimal solution is 10, 1, and then the associated objective value is 21. That's graphical approach. So let's go back to think about what's happening when we do this graphical approach. When we are pushing this ISO quant line, where will we stop at? Okay, intuitively, we always stop at a corner or an edge. For example, suppose this is a feasible region that I give to you, and I give you three different objective functions. In the first objective function, you want to push along this way, then this point is the first optimal solution. Or if I want to push in this way, then this point is another optimal solution. In the first and the second case, we stop at corners. But if, you, uh, if I give you another objective function and you want to move downwards, in that case, you may stop actually at, a, at an edge. Okay? And then you can see that all the points here are equally good according to this ISO quant line. All the points here are optimal. Okay? But it seems that there is no other possibilities. We always stop at a corner or an edge which contains a corner. Or if this is a three-dimensional problem, we may stop at a surface which again contains a corner. So we get an intuition about corners, right? It seems to us that we always, uh, at the place that we stop, there are always one or some corners. So we're asking whether this intuition is still true for LPs more than two variables, and indeed, that's true. But to say more about that, we need a more rigorous definition of corners, okay? Because graphically, we know what are corners, but we need to have some definitions. So let's do some math to define extreme points, okay? Extreme points have some rigorous mathematical definitions. Suppose I give you a set, uh, which is a subset of Rn. In this case, this set, for this set, a point x is an extreme point, if and only if you cannot find another two points that is feasible, and these two points can co be combined to make x. So, I'm saying that there does not exist a three tuple, okay, a collection of these three things, such that x1 is a feasible point, x2 is a feasible point, and lambda is some number, some number to combine x1 and x2 to make x. For example, in the first uh, graph here, okay, in this square, I have four extreme points, okay, here, 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 and here, because for any of them, there's no way for you to find two points so that they can be combined to get your extreme points. But if I give you a point, for example, here, then it's easy to get two points, okay? x1 is here, x2 is there, so that when you connect x1 and x2, you can touch the point I give to you, this red dot, okay? So for the first example, I have four extreme points. For the second example here, okay, this corner and this corner, they are both extreme points, that's true. But all the points on this curve, they are also extreme points, according to this definition. Why? If I give you a point here, is it possible for you to find a line segment containing this line? such that the two endpoints are both in the set? Okay, certainly it's impossible. Even if you do this tangent 
light segment, you can observe that both endpoints are not in the set. So all the points along the curve are extreme points. Okay? So you see that extreme points and the corners are somewhat different. Finally, suppose I give you this uh, this graph. Then these two these four points, they are extreme points. That's fine. But this one is not, okay? Because for this one, it's easy for you to get a, a line segment such that you can call this x1, call this x2, and then you can see that they can be combined to get this one. So, uh, this is the introduction about extreme points. You have the definition, you can verify for any set, for any point, whether it is an extreme point. Okay? But uh, one thing that you may want to convince yourself is that for a linear program, you will not see a feasible region like this or like this. For a feasible region, it's always something like a triangle, a square, or a polyhedron. Okay, and that means a duo bian xing or duo mian ti. Okay, so extreme points are somewhat intuitively corners for linear programs. All right. So about extreme points, what do we have? We have this fact. Proposition one: Given any linear program, if there is an optimal solution. There is an extreme point optimal solution. Okay, there is an extreme point optimal solution. So the first thing is to uh, mention that I'm not saying this. The following statement is wrong. If a solution is optimal, it is an optimal solution. Uh, it is an extreme point. This statement is wrong. Okay. This statement is wrong. So I'm saying that if there is an optimal solution, then you may find an extreme point that is an optimal solution. But there may also be some other points, right? For example, if I give you multiple optimal solutions here, then this point and this point they are both extreme points. But a solution here is not an extreme point, but it is also optimal. Okay, So it's important to carefully understand this statement. And then another thing that we need to tell you is that this statement is very important. Okay, Because now given any linear program, you only need to focus on a very small number of points. Okay, previously the number of feasible points is um, basically infinite. Okay, there are uncountable, ma uncountably many feasible points that may be a candidate of the optimal solution. But now you only need to worry about extreme points. Okay, among all those extreme points, you only need to find the best extreme point, and then. If there is an optimal solution, your best extreme point must be the optimal solution. So what we mentioned about this particular property will be useful for, uh, for when we develop the method to solve the general programs. Okay, that's going to happen in the next uh, I mean in the next lecture. Okay, a brief summary. When you want to do graphical approach, you do that in six steps. Draw the feasible region. Draw isoquant lines, and then find a direction to push. That's an uh, improving direction, and then just push. You stop at the edge, or sorry, you stop at a corner or an edge, and then you get binding constraints at an optimal solution, and then you do uh, you solve that optimal solution by doing a gross Jordan elimination or whatever method, and then you find those objective values. When you want to do this, there's only just one thing that you need to be worried about. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you can do this conceptually, but you need to make your graph clear and make them in the right scale. Okay, Do that carefully and slowly so that you can avoid mistakes and correctly solve that problem. And 
with graphical approach, we got an intuition is that for any LP, if there is an ex if there is an optimal solution, there must be an extreme point that is an optimal solution. Keep that in mind. Okay.